Hello, health enthusiasts. Today, we will discuss a topic that has been a source of confusion for years, high cholesterol and how it relates to heart disease. Additionally, I have some interesting insights that may alter your perception of cholesterol-lowering medications. Get ready, as I am here to explain it all to you. We have long believed that high cholesterol is responsible for heart disease. However, recent research from the past decade suggests an alternative perspective. Contrary to popular belief, high cholesterol is not the root cause of heart disease. Rather, it is associated with it. To better understand this, consider the analogy of smoke and fire. Just as smoke is an indication of a fire, high cholesterol is a sign of an underlying issue. And that issue is inflammation, specifically chronic inflammation. S. Heart disease was a rarity. Physicians could go through their entire careers without encountering a single heart disease or heart attack case. Fast forward to the 1950s, and suddenly, heart disease became an epidemic, taking lives prematurely. So, what was the catalyst behind this shift? Drumroll, please, inflammation. Chronic inflammation was the unseen fire that was damaging hearts and arteries. It's fascinating how ancient words can hold secrets, and the word, inflammation, is no exception. In fact, its Latin translation is, fire, which is fitting because inflammation can cause damage to our hearts and arteries. Imagine a small hole in a wall that needs patching up you would fix it immediately, right? But if you had to patch up holes every day, the walls would become thicker and take up more space. This is exactly what happens to your arteries over time due to inflammation. Your body is a remarkable repair machine and produces cholesterol to fix the damage, but if this process continues, it could lead to clogged arteries and potentially cause heart attacks. Let's clear up a long-standing misconception about heart disease. Contrary to popular belief, the rise in heart disease during the mid-20th century wasn't caused by saturated fats in our diet. Rather, it was a combination of factors including increased smoking, higher intake of refined sugar, and the introduction of seed oils. I created a video explaining the harmful effects of consuming refined sugar and seed oils. The link is provided in the description box below. Surprisingly, saturated fat isn't as bad as it's been made out to be. It can actually increase good cholesterol (HDL) and decrease the specific type of cholesterol (small, dense LDL particles) linked to heart disease. Let's take a closer look at the topic of cholesterol. Many people consider total cholesterol to be a significant marker, but it's actually more complicated than that. To break it down, total cholesterol equals HDL plus LDL, like a math equation. Typically, a total cholesterol result beyond 200 might lead to a prescription for satins, which are popular medications that lower cholesterol. However, not all LDL particles, also known as bad cholesterol, are created equal. That's where LDL subfractions come in. There are large, fluffy ones and medium-sized ones that aren't major contributors to heart disease. Surprisingly, healthy fats, such as saturated fats, can actually promote these beneficial subfractions. If your cholesterol readings are concerning, don't panic. Total cholesterol isn't the only important factor to consider. Advanced lipid panels can provide a clearer understanding of your cholesterol levels. I've seen eye-opening results when patients followed my advice and underwent these tests. In particular, HDL, big puffy LDL, and medium-sized LDL were healthy, while the small, dense LDL which is problematic was low. Before we wrap up, it's crucial to acknowledge the multifaceted roles of cholesterol. It's not just a random molecule floating in your bloodstream. Cholesterol is pivotal for our brain and cellular functions. Ever wondered about the building blocks of your sex hormones? Well, that's cholesterol at work again. It has a myriad of essential roles that often get overlooked. It's tempting to reach for a pill for every ailment. But when it comes to cholesterol, it's not as simple as blocking its production through medications. Doing so can inadvertently disrupt some of the vital functions cholesterol serves in our body. Remember, we need to address the fire beneath the smoke, inflammation. Now, as promised, here's what I often suggest to my patients to help them champion their heart health. 1. Eliminate these inflammation-promoting culprits. Refined sugar. Seed oils, often masquerading as vegetable oils. Processed grains. Smoking. 2. Incorporate a lot of soluble fiber into your diet. Fresh, wholesome vegetables. Nutrient-rich fruits. 3. These fats have been our allies since ancient times, long before the negative hype. Traditional animal fats, like lard and tallow. Fish oil. Coconut oil. Olive oil.
avocado and its oil, macadamia oil, nuts, especially tree nuts. 4. Based on rigorous research, these supplements have proven anti-inflammatory effects. Omega-3 essential fatty acids, vitamin D3, turmeric, especially its active ingredient, curcumin. Thank you for taking part in today's in-depth exploration of heart health. We have exposed some misconceptions, highlighted some neglected facts, and given you practical steps to take. Please subscribe to our channel for more thought-provoking insights that challenge conventional health beliefs. Let's work together towards a healthier future.